New for motion simulation in 2012 is the ability to use sensors to monitor key parameters or results in our simulation. This might be to alert us if the torque on a motor exceeds a rated value, or if the forces at a joint become too high. Creating sensors is very straightforward. If we look at a result that we've already chosen to plot, so in this case the force on a motor, in order to add a sensor for it we just tick the box here and then choose the particular parameter that it is that we wish to monitor. This then creates a sensor back in SOLIDWORKS and if we wish we can also choose to alert us if that value exceeds or gets lower than a particular value. We can also choose to monitor it just at a specific time. Another great use of these sensors is for the use in a design study. So in this particular example of the medical examination chair, we need to be able to achieve a certain range of motion so that patients are able to get onto the chair in its low position and also that it achieves a certain height. But ideally we want to be able to do that with the lowest possible force required by the actuator. In this example we're using optimization, so this would require simulation professional. We'll also have a look at an example where we're just going to use SOLIDWORKS Premium. So in an optimization study, what we're going to do is specify uh, particular parameters or dimensions in our design that can vary. We're then going to specify the constraints, which in this case are going to be the minimum and maximum height of the chair, and the force, which we want to minimize. If we then look at the results view, we can see all the different iterations that SOLIDWORKS Motion has tried to achieve this. So some of them, like iteration 3, We've got a nice low value for the force, but we can see that the minimum height is greater than what we want to achieve. So that in this example, the chair isn't able to get low enough for a patient to get on. So across all of these various iterations, the optimal design is this one. So we can see the values that we've added as sensors, the minimum height and maximum height, have both been achieved, but we've done so with the lowest possible force. So from this view we can animate the results for that particular iteration, but if we need to study them in more detail we can go back to our motion study where the results are now displayed for our optimal design. In this example, for a given angular trajectory, we want SOLIDWORKS to tell us what velocity is required on the ball to get it through the hoop. So we've already set up a motion study where we're giving the ball an initial velocity and we can see that at 6 meters per second it's going to get nowhere near the hoop. So we could just use trial and error to increase that value until it does, but why not get SOLIDWORKS to do it for us? So the first thing we need to do is to add our sensor that's going to monitor how close the ball is to the hoop. We've already added this as a plot. What we now want to do, so we can see it's measuring between the centre of the ball and the centre of the hoop, we just want to now create a sensor from that. We can now go ahead and create our design study. So this time we're just using SOLIDWORKS Premium, so we're not going to use the optimization option. So our variable is going to be the velocity. We can just give that a name. And we're going to choose that from our motion study. Now, we know that at 6 meters per second, it doesn't even make it to the hoop. So that's going to be our starting point and we're going to try increasing that up to 8 meters per second using an increment of 0.25. Now our constraint is the sensor that we've just created and we need that to be less than, uh, not zero, but actually we could, anything less than 111 millimeters will allow the ball to pass freely through the hoop. So we can now run our design study. And we can see from those results that we're going to have to increase our velocity up to 7.25 meters per second in order to get the ball through. Just playing some of the earlier 
studies, we can see that it doesn't actually reach the hoop still. But at 7.25, it's going to pass freely through. Now anyone who's played basketball will know that we're going to have a much greater chance of getting the ball through the hoop if we use the backboard. So another example we've already set up in this motion study. We've now added contact. So we're allowing the ball to come into contact with the backboard, the hoop and the floor. And again we've already set up a design study um, this time we know that it's going to have to be at least 7 meters per second before it's even going to hit the hoop so we're going to use a much smaller range from just 7 to 8 and a smaller increment of 0.125 meters per second and again we want it to be less than 111 millimeters for the ball to pass through so looking at our results we can see that initially the ball still falls short On the next scenario, the ball actually bounces back off the hoop, but at 7.25 metres per second, the ball can pass through. Again, at 7.375, but at 7.5, it bounces off the back. Increasing it further still, we can see how now we're going to use the backboard to bounce it through the hoop. And again, having found the results at which it works, if we need to analyse them in any more detail, we can flick back to our motion study and look at things like the actual uh, path of the ball that's taken to go through the hoop, the velocity at any time. Now this is obviously a fairly trivial example, but I'm sure most of you can think of examples where you could use motion with sensors and design studies to solve engineering problems.